Impact patterns of blood spatter. Drip patterns will take different um, characteristics depending on the angle that the impact happened at and the surface upon which the blood impacted. It's going to affect droplet shape and whether or not there's satellite droplets. I'm sure you're probably familiar with this by just like spilling coffee around the house or something, right? If you are carrying a full cup of coffee and you trip and you're on your kitchen floor, that liquid's gonna go flying, it'll hit your kitchen floor and it'll splash all over the place. Your kitchen floor is smooth and, or typically if it's not like hardwood or something, it's smooth, it's non-porous, and so when that liquid hits it, it doesn't soak in, it has nowhere to go but splashing around. If you're walking across the floor on the carpet and you trip and spill some of your coffee, it spills out of your cup and it splashes down onto the carpet, but it just stays. Wherever that coffee landed, it just soaked right into the carpet. You don't have any of those little um, splashes or the little droplet splashes around where the coffee spill was, quite like you would off of a kitchen floor where you spill your coffee, it splashes all over the floor, and then there's little droplets of coffee all over your counters or in the fridge and the dishwasher and whatever, right? The angle that blood happens or that, that um, when a blood hits a surface at an angle, it'll take a different shape. The steeper the angle, the longer you um, the longer of a drip, the sort of more drawn out of a teardrop shape that you have will indicate a steeper angle. So this type of a, a blood droplet would happen if you had it approaching a surface like this. If your blood droplet looked more like this, you might think that the angle was a little more shallow. And if it was nice and round, it probably fell straight down. The surface, as I just mentioned, lends itself to different absorbency characteristics and therefore different spatter. You might have textured or irregular spatter. If the um, surface is absorbent or porous, it'll soak it in. You'll have fewer of those satellite drops. If you hit a hydrophobic or a polished surface like glass or freshly refinished wood or um, even plastic, like plastic sheeting often has a water repellent quality to it. In that case, your blood droplet is going to hit and it's going to splash lots and lots of fairly large satellite drops around. And you may or may not even have much spine, um, uh, uh, much in the way of spines for those types of uh, droplets. Organic material will wick up um, what liquids in a different way that synthetic materials will, oftentimes, but not always. Synthetic materials have some sort of water repellent nature to them. And different fabrics and different surfaces will wick differently. Wicking specifically refers to fibers, pulling liquids along the length. So when you have, you know, a sheet with the fibers going across like this, a blood droplet hits right here, it's going to wick up each one of those fibers individually. And of course the fibers are small and close together, so it'll look like it kind of splays out in an even haze in a circle or so around that droplet. If you have um, paper where you have sort of a mis mishmash of a lot of different kinds of fibers, you'll notice that the, fi the liquid is absorbed a little bit differently. The speed and direction of impact can be um, identified to a certain degree from the um, blood spatter pattern. When blood spatter hits an object forcefully, when it makes forceful contact, um, the projecting droplets, uh, droplets will project from its source. So if you have a bullet that's coming through this is foam, but this is supposed to represent a person, right? You'll have both forward spatter and back spatter produced. You'll have this even if the wound isn't necessarily penetrating, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But when you have um, a, something that's going through, you're going to carry a certain amount of blood in the same direction as the impact in the first place, and you will have some back spatter that's in the opposite direction from where the um, source of impact came from. If you have a penetrating wound, then your forward spatter is going to be in the same direction as that um, bullet was traveling, for example, and the back spatter will be pointing towards where it came from. 
if you have impact spatter from something like uh, blunt trauma, repeated blunt trauma that eventually ends up causing um, blood, like if you're getting beaten with a baseball bat until you know you're not bruising anymore, you're bleeding out, you will have um, spatter that's going in the direction um, from towards where the bat was coming from, as well as in the general direction where the bat was headed. Low velocity spatter takes on mostly large and separate drops of roughly greater than four millimeters. They're produced by low force events or gravity alone um, from a relatively low height. They'll produce secondary spatter only really from droplets hitting a pool of blood. They're not going to really produce secondary spatter or any satellite droplets by themselves. If you cut yourself and you're holding your wound over the table just an inch or two high, when the blood hits the table, you'll just see those blood droplets. You're not going to see a bunch of extra little droplets around it. The higher up you go, the more likely it is that you see those individual um, satellite droplets form. Medium velocity spatter involves mostly small drops, not microscopic or anything, but pretty small. They're between one and four millimeters or so in diameter. Let's just take a minute to remember the uh, properties of a circle. The whole way around the circle is the circumference. From the middle of the circle to the edge is the radius. And from edge to edge is the diameter. So the width across the droplet is the diameter. These are produced with moderate force where the blood's moving at roughly five to 25 feet per second and is associated mostly with blunt force trauma of some kind. You could also experience these from um, uh, high-ish impact uh, stab wounds as well. Cast off spatter is where blood covered object flings blood in an arc onto a surface. So you have, oh no, poor person right here and they're going to get hit with this pool cue. Sorry, guy. When they are hit, they're going to have your forward and back spatter from the wound where the pool cue hits the person. And then also, when they pull back the pool cue after having made contact with that blood, it's going to fling droplets on its path. That's cast off spatter. The size and pattern of droplets are proportional to and indicative of the surface from which they came. So if you think about a pool cue, it kind of has this triangular sort of a shape. If the person was hit right up here near the point of the pool cue, the droplets will be coming off of this very small end and the droplets will be very small. If the person was hit with the thicker end of the pool cue, the surface that was actually hitting them is much larger and so the droplets will also be much larger and also probably spaced a little bit further apart because the bigger droplets have um, a different relationship with physics than the smaller ones do, so to speak. Um, they may help determine the directionality if the spatter points in the direction of backwards thrust. So it could help put this person and the wound at least um, in a certain uh, space within the um, um, room that you're looking at the spatter in. And it can also help show the minimum number of blows that would have happened. So every time this person hits this poor soul, whoops, I keep hitting buttons here. Every time this person hits and then draws back the pool cue for another hit, they're going to leave another line of blood spatter. Unless people are moving around, they're probably going to be in roughly the same place. Of course, if this person is running, they're going to be in um, a different pattern and it'll be easier to tell the different ones apart. But looking at the cast off spatter can help show you the minimum number of blows. There could be more if there's lots of spatter and it's hard to tell what um, just how many rows, quote unquote, of these you might have. Um, and if um, they overlap, if nobody's moving and the person's taking fairly regular um, blows to the person, you might have a lot of overlapping lines. And so you could tell, well, they at least got hit once or twice, could be a lot more. 
Speed and direction of impact. So the spatter is going to look differently based on whether or not somebody was impacted from a high velocity versus a low velocity. High velocity spatter, like from uh, gunshots, for example, where you have a bullet that's traveling extremely quickly, is going to have mostly minuscule drops. You see, this is almost more like a haze and with very few individual droplets. They're produced by high amounts of force between 5 and 25 feet per second. And again, they're so fine, they're oftentimes just going to produce like a mist on a surface and oftentimes won't even, because they're so small and so light, they won't even be able to make it the distance that the bullet is able to travel before it hits a surface. They may instead, if the, if the blood came from right here, for example, be so light that once they get speed, they lose speed quickly against um, resistance against the air and fall and land here-ish instead. Gunshot spatter, aside from any other high velocity, um, any high velocity impact, is characterized by an entrance wound, and often because it is so um, uh, so fast, and it, it really takes a lot of resistance for it to slow down appropriately, particularly from rifles. There's oftentimes an exit wound. Um, the droplets can range from medium to atomized, depending on what is created by the entrance wound and the exit wound, and how close the person was to the surface that the bullet ultimately got in, um, uh, embedded itself in. Ammunition can change the character of the droplets. If you have a shotgun, which is, is, a, is a, like a, a round tube that houses lots of tiny, tiny little pellet bullets, really, and what's happening when you shoot a shotgun is you're spewing those little pellets out, not one big slug. When those little pellets are ejected from the gun, they're moving fast, but since they're individually small, the resistance the air puts up feels like a lot to a small little bullet and they slow down relatively quickly. If it's moving fairly slowly when it hits a person, relatively speaking, you're not going to necessarily get that super fine, delicate mist. You might get some of the larger droplets because you're talking about more of a medium to high velocity rather than just a straight up high velocity impact. If you shoot somebody at point blank range with a rifle, there's a decent chance that that bullet's going to go straight through their head and it will um, create a very fine mist of blood. You may also find pooling that's separate from this mist of blood, and that can also help put um, the um, person in space based on where they were hit versus where you actually see that um, spatter.